that we will attain success in this world if we do not implement His words, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that is the reason why it was revealed, as you mentioned in the beginning of the Quran. How can we expect that Allah Azza wa Jal gives us success and tawfiq in this dunya and ultimately the reward in the akhirah if we do not implement the guidelines that He has given us through His words, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa mentions in the Quran he says, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّي مِنَّا قَوْمِ اتَّخَلُوا هَالَ الْقُرْآنَ مَجْوَعًا He says, and the messenger said, O oh my Lord, O oh my Lord, indeed my people have taken this Qur'an as abandoned. They have abandoned this Qur'an. How? <coughs> By not implementing the teachings of Allah Azza wa in the Qur'an and not Staying away from the things that he has prohibited us from doing in his book, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he also says, as an inquiry, then do they not reflect upon the Quran or are the rocks upon their, upon their hearts? Or are there rocks upon their hearts? We ask Allah Azza wa Jal not to make us one of them. We ask Allah that He makes us those who read and learn from what they've read and implement what they've read, what they've learned. Now, let's ask ourselves again, from which group are we? From which of these two am I? Am I from those who Allah describes and says they have abandoned their Quran and there are lots upon their hearts? Or are we from those who say, Sami'na wa Afa'na? Or are we from those who say, We hear and we obey? That is a question that we should all ask ourselves, my brothers and sisters. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, Alam yatni lilalina amanu, and taqsha'akulubuhum bi dhikrillah. Is it not time? Is it not time for those who have believed, for their hearts to soften? And tremble <coughs> due to the hearing of his words, of his verses, of the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Quran. Is it not time for us, my brothers and sisters, to reflect upon what we read? Is it not time that we find the guidance in these words, subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it not time that we try to understand his words and his guidance? in his book, Dalla wa Ala. Now, we need to realize, our brothers, that this Quran that we have in front of us, that every masjid is full of, is not something light. It's not something that we can take for granted. Because Allah has already mentioned in the Quran the weight of this Quran. He mentions the weight and the magnitude and the importance of this Quran. And he says, Lo anzalna hadha al-Quran ala jabali la ra'aytahu khashi'an mutasaddi'an min khashiyatillah. He says, if this Quran was revealed upon a mountain, upon a mountain, my brothers and sisters, he says, la ra'aytahu, you would have seen it. Khashi'an mutasaddi'an min khashiyatillah. You would have seen it. Humble and tremble due to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is how heavy this Quran is, my brothers and sisters. That is how important this Quran is. The mountains will not be able to hold it or take care of it. That is why we have been given this responsibility. We have been given this responsibility, my brothers and sisters, to take this Quran and read and understand and implement it in our lives and then try to guide others using it. That is the purpose of the Quran. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the and the ability to understand what He wants from us and to implement His words in the way that He will call you Ali Akulam and Tisma'am and Astaghfirullah and what He said in the same way that He will call you Ali Akulam and Tisma'am
الحمد لله رب العالمين وعلى عقد المتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده الصالح وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. ما دي بعض السلسلة. It is high time for us to stop over. It is time for us to renew our relationship with the Quran. It is time for us to try our best to act upon what we read and what we learn from the Quran. Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi has said, I have left you two things. I have left you two things. He said, if you hold on to it, you will not be misguided and you will not go astray ever. He told Allah, or Sunnah. The word of Allah, Quran, and my Sunnah. Two things, if you were to hold on to firmly, the Prophet is promising us we will not go astray. This, my brothers and sisters, is the solution for our success in this dunya and in the Akhirah. Because as we mentioned earlier, the Quran can either be an argument for you or an argument against you on the day of the day. If we are from the people that we mentioned, of those who read, understand and implement, the Quran on the day of judgment will argue for us. And you will be said, the Prophet was mentioned in the Hadith, that you will be said to a part of the Quran, the person who reads the Quran, and by the way, that's not just reading, it's reading, understanding, and implementation. He says, you'll be said to him, Taqra, waraktil, wartaqi, fa inna manzilataka in the Akhir Ayatim, Taqra. You'll be said to him, read, recite, because indeed, the level, or your level, in Jannah in Paradise will be where you finish, where your last ayah is read. And he has mentioned in another hadith that the people who are fluent in reading of the Quran, the reading is easy for them. They will be They will be from the angels who are there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the magnitude, my brothers and sisters of the Quran. This is the reward we will inshallah receive if we improve our relationship with the Quran. Well, on the other hand, the Quran could be an argument against us if we do not give it its due right. But we are from the people you mentioned in the beginning. Have abandoned the Quran, the Quran will argue against us on the day of judgment. The Quran, the word of Allah will argue against us on the day of judgment. And say, so Allah, we have not read it. We have not implemented it. And what a great loss that would be, my brothers and sisters. What a great loss. And I will conclude with a hadith that is mentioned in Sunnah the Imam al where Umar radiallahu ta'ala had appointed a man over an area. And this man was known to be a slave, a servant, a poor person. And when Umar radiallahu ta'ala was then asked, why did you appoint this man over, you know, an, an, an area to be a governor over an area? You know, he's a slave and so on. Listen to what he said. Listen to the response of Allah Taala. He said, the man, this person, even though he's a slave and a servant, he is someone who reads the Quran and he knows the rules of everything. He is someone who reads the Quran, and when he says reads the Quran, it is not just reading, it is reading and implementation. And thus, he was given the responsibility over an area, he became a governor. And he made his very famous saying, Umar he said these very famous words, in Allah, يَرْفَعُ بِهَا الْقُرْآنِ أَقْوَامًا وَيَضْعُ بِهَا أَخْرِينَ he said, Allah Azza wa Jal raises a people. He raises a nation with this Quran. He raises a nation with this Quran. And he humiliates 
others. If you are from those who implement, understand and implement and read the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise you in this dunya and in the other. If you are someone who does it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will humiliate you in this dunya and also in the after. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to read the Quran to the best of our ability and implement his rulings within and also adhere to the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the best of our ability.